Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm just down here to the Hobby Farmhouse for one night. I had planned on being down here most of this week, but now uh, Melissa's son Brandon, his girlfriend Megan, and her little boy Gabe are going to be stopping up at the farmhouse to spend a couple of days. They're coming up to the farmhouse next weekend. Melissa hasn't seen Brandon in, I think it's about three years. So, I mean, she is up in Minnesota here, and he was in Nebraska and Iowa working, so they just, their, their paths haven't crossed, so this is going to be pretty exciting. So I need to get back up there. We're going to move the fifth wheel from next to that front garage, if you guys watch those videos, and bring it back up by the house where we had it when we first bought that house and get it all hooked up because we have no air conditioning in that house upstairs and with the weather we've been having it's super hot up there and the fifth wheel has awesome air conditioning i mean tv you know its own kitchen bathroom shower everything so we're going to hook that up and they'll be comfortable staying and i had to come down here well i went to work which is south of here and i had to stay here at least one night because i needed to pick up my fifth wheel hitch so i can bring that up there and tomorrow night I'll probably hook this up and I'll get that moved. I also needed to get down here to take a look at the garden, get the garden weeded. I think it was about 10 days ago that I did the last video and this garden has went crazy since then. We've been having high heat, high humidity, and down here, um, unlike up in Cloquet where the farmhouse is, we have had no rain. Down here, they've had a couple of downpours of like an inch or inch and a half of rain with lightning and thunder and all the things that really make a garden grow. Over here where some of the stunted squash plants are, and I don't know, could even be this one over here is probably cucumber. Uh, they are really taken off. Um, I think when I was here last time, I said that, you know, the next week or so, things are going to really start to go. And I definitely was not lying about that because kohlrabi is doing good. Cauliflower is getting some heads already. You can see a little one right there starting. Another one down in there. I notice on this side of the garden, some of these plants, like my dinosaur kale, something is eating on the leaves. Like this one's getting it pretty bad. And it looks like they're little bugs. They're not... Um, they're not like the Japanese beetle that eats the potato plants. I have none of them yet on the potato plants, and I usually get those every year. But now, after this video is done, I'll go ahead and I'm going to hit all this side here with 7 Dust. Um, that's what I use. I'm sure there's other things to do, but as soon as something starts screwing around with my garden, I put 7 Dust on it and uh, take care of the problem immediately. I see I have a flower on my eggplant. I don't know what kind of pepper. I'd have to read it. This might be jalapeno or something. I see there's a little flower starting there. This one over here also. Everything's pretty much right on schedule. These beans, which I thought were a bush bean. I can tell by the way they're growing. They're a pole bean and they're getting flowers. I'll just let them pull along the ground. I'm not worried about it, but I would say in about a week, I'm gonna have beans. These pea plants here, which are a dwarf variety, no fencing needed, they said, and uh, <laughs> look at them climb up that fence. If I stand here, it's chest tall. Uh, they're getting flowers, so in another week, depending on, um, you can see here, the deer have come in and taken a few snacks here and there, but I would say in a week, I'm definitely gonna have some peas that are ready to pick. And these are not the sh um, shuck the peas. These are the kind that I like to put in stir fry, a snow pea. Uh, I could care less about shucking my own peas and canning them. If I can't just fry up pod and all, I'm really not interested. Sarah's tomato plants, which were planted a, at least two weeks earlier than mine, are really looking healthy. A lot of flowers on them. But if you remember when I planted these, they were very small and they had been stunted from being frostbit up north and they are catching up. They're doing good and they've got flowers on them. Once again over here it gets more sun. These are taller and you see how they kind of get shorter as we go down the line. There's Miss Turkey. She's out getting some fresh air. 
And that's because of that tree right there. It blocks the sun in the morning. These are some white radishes, which are, you, I could pick them right now. I might pick a few and bring them up north with me. Uh, I'm not big on radish, but that's the kind of seed tape I could get. Um, radish, and then beets and carrots. And the beets and carrots are coming along down there pretty good too. The potato plants, you can see here that some of them are starting to flower. If you guys have watched my video on uh, potatoes, the life cycle of a potato, where it goes through the whole entire year from planting to harvest, you know that if it's flowering, that's telling, that you have, telling you that you have a healthy, happy plant. At this time of year, weeding around the potatoes is really not advised. I get in there and I'll scrape a little bit where I see a big one. Because if you see, like right down here, you see how that ground is starting to crack there? That's because there's potatoes growing underneath there. So if I swipe over that with my hoe to pull the weeds, um, I can slice off part of a potato. So you can get in there and grab the weeds and pull them. Um, but usually, unless they're really big ones, I just leave it be. I see my few uh, celery plants here. They're even doing pretty good. These are the beans that I planted in place of the Bush Lake 274s that only one really germinated. And these were just planted, I think I just planted them like 10 days ago. And look at how tall they are. That's up to that stick right there. And then of course we've got beans behind that that were planted earlier. I think those were the big kahuna beans. And those too, the deer have taken a couple of snipes off the top, but I'm getting a lot of flowers. And once again, sunny side of the row, not as sunny side of the row. Over here on the viney side of the garden, even though a lot of this isn't viney, these are all zucchini up front here, which don't vine. But I mean, look at this here. I swear when I look at this, I think I could grow stuff on concrete. This is just amazing how they've shot up. And I mean, and they're, they're, they have squash on them. And some of these are, um, next week I will definitely be harvesting some squash. There's one right there. There's a little one down there. We're gonna have squash coming out of our ears. This one here is one of the ones that was planted that was severely frostbitten, tiny when I planted it. And you can still see that the color of the leaves are a lighter green compared to those, but they're getting better. They were real yellowish when I planted, and they're starting to come along. Same with over here. Now this one here is a little bit smaller, but the color of the leaves are getting closer to these, so it's definitely getting more healthy. This poor guy here, I was coming through with my hoe weeding, and I completely pulled it out of the ground, so more than likely that one won't make it, but I shoved it back in there anyway. There's another nice one starting right there. One of Melissa and I's favorite thing to do is to eat the yellow squash and the zucchini squash. Either do them in like a vegetable bake or oh, whatever. Cook them up however. They're just always good. The little flower garden is looking absolutely awesome. I moved Old Reliable over here today. Still need to get her in, but right now they're just too busy, so... And I imagine the days that they're not too busy, I'm up north, so <laughs> I'll get it in there eventually. I still can't believe that this is the fifth or sixth year. Fifth year, maybe, that I've since I planted the Honeycrisp here, and I have yet to get a flower or an apple on this one particular tree. And that's my favorite apple. I mean, it's twice as tall as I am now. When is it going to make up its mind that it's supposed to make apples? This tree here was planted like one or two years after, and it's probably got 30 or 40 apples on it right now. It's not a honey crisp, but, and it's probably three times as tall as I am. This one here, I believe, is the same kind of tree, but it never gets quite as many apples. Not nearly as many, to be honest. This one maybe has 10 apples on it. Plum's on the plum tree, but it's got this stuff going on. It needs to be sprayed with something, and I don't know what, and I need to figure that out. But I really need is more time. <laughs> 
My Pembina plum, look at that. They're such good plums too and they get really big. The deer flies are horrible over here. Not quite so bad by the garden, but right now there's probably 20 of them buzzing around the camera and me. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. We're all up to date on the garden. It's already after 8 o'clock. I need to go in there and find something to make for supper. And I need to get some 7 dust on this first, though, or else I'm going to forget. I will see you guys on the next video.